Thank you very much, Marnie uh, and Sangha Live. Uh, it's always good to be here. I've been on a few times before, and it's uh, it's a very special thing to have a Sangha, a, a truly global Sangha uh, live. Um, so um, good to be with you. Happy New Year. We're still in the, the first week of, of the year, and there's something about saying Happy New Year uh, that we can all wish goodwill to everyone. Uh, we'll start with um, with the meditation. Uh, before we before we do, I just want to encourage those who are um, willing and able to put on your video. Uh, I would so appreciate uh, having as much of a sense of community as possible. Um, so uh, I invite us to do that and to uh, not get into um, mm, selfing that says, oh, I don't like the way I look or, oh, I don't want to be seen or whatever. Uh, let, let yourself be seen uh, if you are open and willing to do that. I would uh, feel really appreciative of that. Now I'm going to Thanks so much. I'm going to uh, change the view so I can now see as many people who are willing to be seen. Oops. Okay. Great. Thank you, those folks. And if you, yeah, if you don't have the right connection uh, for some reason, um, you know, then of course you have the option to do as you do as you see fit. That's that's the Buddha's standard line. Um, so do as you see fit, and uh, let's feel the blessing of community here. So we'll sit for a little while, as Marnie said, and then we'll. Um, I'll offer a talk and then uh, we'll have some Q&A and explore it together. So, put my, my timer on. And I invite us all to find a posture that we can be present and at ease. And feel the ground beneath you. Feel the earth support you. Let yourself just rest in being held in gravity and at the same time let your posture be both an upright sense of dignity i like Thich Nhat Hanh's image of thinking of yourself like a mountain strong worthy of respect and at the same time a quality of ease and relaxation. So if there's any sense of holding or tension to relax and you might take a few deeper breaths and breathing in calm. And as you breathe out, let go ease and just sitting in whatever way is most supportive for your body but having that balance of alertness and relaxation and invite you to have a 
soft half smile on your face, like the Buddha's half smile. Also that brings some spaciousness to the heart. Go ahead, just try it. Just a slight up curling of the lips or as much of a smile as, as you like. And just see, notice what happens. We're here to open to goodness. This is a, a wonderful, simple invitation to do that. And then to notice first the fact that you're alive and you're sitting here. A pretty amazing miracle when I think about it. Oh, life is expressing itself through this form. And just know that you're sitting alive and breathing. And so you might start by just tuning into this breath that's keeping you alive. Wherever you might feel it, your whole body or your belly or chest or nostrils. And if the breath is, for some reason, not a supportive connection to the present, then simply know that you're sitting and feel that connection and your aliveness that way. Letting the mind be open and relaxed and interested. The mindfulness practice is knowing whatever is happening right now in the present moment. And so besides having some home base like the breath or the posture or feeling your hands can be a an anchor to the present, not needing to push anything away. And if something else arises, then that's the next thing to greet with that open kind awareness of the sensations in the body, sounds if they call your attention. feelings or emotions, if they become strong. In knowing that thinking is happening, everything is just coming and going all on its own. You don't have to make the moment happen. Just greet it with kindness and presence. If you find that your mind has wandered off and gotten lost, no need to judge. Don't take it personally. It's just what minds do. And as soon as you realize, appreciate that you're back here in the present once again, and let the return be done with patience and kindness and begin once again what's happening right now.
Let yourself come out gently, slowly. Hmm. So, welcome once again, just looking at the faces of those whose faces I can see. And, and again, if you are willing to put on your, your camera, um, that would be great. <clears throat> And uh, before I get into our, our topic, I, I just want to remind uh, everyone that Sangha Live uh, operates on a Donna basis. And so if you are, um, if you're so moved, this is the tradition that these teachings have come to us for all of these years. That's how the Buddha set up the teachings that they're supported by those who uh, receive and appreciate them and uh, and those who offer the teachings uh, are uh, doing so out of a spirit of gratitude and uh, I see Marnie just put in the uh, in the chat box the donate button sangha.live slash donate and as she writes, uh, donations made today by midnight UK time will be timestamped and shared with me. So if you give Donna after midnight tonight, uh, it goes to Song Alive, which is all goes to Song Alive. Uh, um, so that's appreciated. Uh, that's how I, I've been teaching all these years. Um, and when you, if you do make a donation, I, I, I hope that uh, as the Buddha suggests, you, you feel the joy of generosity. This is not something that's, uh, that's compulsory, but um, a way to practice both letting go and, uh, and appreciation. <clears throat> so, um, as was said, the topic that I wanted to talk about, I'm calling changing the channel, opening to goodness. Um, here we are, a new year, fresh start, it would seem, uh, and um, still everything from the, from this past year, uh, is somehow carried inside of us. And that's why I, I love a new year where we can have a sense of a, a fresh start um, and to remember all that's good. Uh, I live in the United States. I'm in Berkeley, California. Um, and this beautiful community is from all over the world and uh, whether you're in the US or uh, or other countries, Europe or Asia or where or the southern hemisphere, wherever you happen to be. Um, in the in our country, um, it's rare that you see an uplifting story um, in the news. They put them in every now and then just for a feature, oh, this is this is something that might give a break from uh, from all the the headlines, as the news says. Uh, if it leads, it bleeds. Oh, sorry, if it bleeds, it leads, um, because that's the news that we uh, that excite the senses, even if it's negatively. And there is so much suffering in the world, you know. Uh, one um, 
can't deny uh, and shouldn't deny how much pain and suffering and cruelty and wars and um, um, climate, of course, that there, there is that we need to open our hearts to. So if we just close off and say, well, that's, that's those people's problems, I'm having a good, uh, that's not seeing the whole of the Dharma. The Buddha starts out with encountering or coming directly in contact with the fact that there's suffering in life. And he said, the more one can open to this truth and not be overwhelmed by it, the more we have a chance to process this truth and come to the end of suffering. So I'm not suggesting that we turn our backs uh, to everything out there, but we can get overloaded and overwhelmed and weighed down by all the pain and sorrow in the world. Our minds can naturally gravitate to the negative. I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with the negativity bias where this almond-shaped cluster of neurons in our brain called the amygdala scans the horizon for danger and then can get activated by it. And it's a good thing that we have the amygdala that keeps us safe, but it can get overactive, particularly if there's stress, but that we, most people, unless you've been training your, your mind and your heart, or you are fortunate to have a natural inclination to see what's good, for most people, there, or many people, there is a bias towards seeing what's wrong. Thich Nhat Hanh has a beautiful instruction acknowledging this tendency of the mind and the heart. Uh, he says, instead of looking for what's wrong, uh, try this instruction, look for what's not wrong. And he gives the example of, oh, last week I had a toothache. I don't have a toothache right now. Oh, how wonderful. Rather than, oh yeah, last week I had a bad toothache. It was really bad and continuing on with how bad it is. Look for what's right. Look for what's good. Not in denial, but to open up our hearts and to uh, be able to come to uh, meet life in a fresh way, in an open way. In Buddhist cosmology, there are six realms of existence, and you can take this on whatever level um, of uh, literal or metaphorical or whatever that you relate to. You don't have to believe this, but this is just what it says in, in uh, in Buddha Dharma, Buddha cosmology. And these different realms are the lowest realms, the hell realm, and then there's the hungry ghost realm, and then the animal realm, and the human realm, and two um, god realms. There's the jealous god realm, even if you've got it great, there's, there's jealousy there. And then there's the heavenly realm, the deva realm. And it's said that of all of those six realms, the human realm happens to be the best realm to wake up to, even better than the God realm, because the human realm has the balance between joy and sorrow. Certainly the lower realms where there's a lot of dukkha, a lot of suffering, uh, it's hard to penetrate uh, that contraction in relation to reality. And the God realms, 
as good as we have as they have it they're kind of laid back enjoying the the delight of pleasures and there's not the uh, opportunity to come to terms with suffering which is a natural result of the fact that everything changes. And when I say suffering, I also uh, include the definition of dukkha, which means unsatisfactoriness or unreliability. That is, everything changes. And since everything changes, there's not going to be any lasting happiness. But the human realm has this balance between sorrow and joy. And so we learn to relate to the sorrow and have a chance if we're fortunate enough to have um, practices and a, a, a way to, uh, to meet it. We learn compassion. And the joys, we learn to open up with gratitude and with delighting in goodness. And these days with uh, so much sorrow and suffering uh, in, in the news or all around or perhaps in our own lives, um, there can be a tendency to focus on what's wrong. And so it takes some training to open up to the goodness. And if you find yourself these days or weeks, and we just went through the holidays, which can be a time of real uplift for many and for others, it's not. For others, it can be a sense of loneliness or we're with uh, families and in uh, and, and dynamics where it's not bringing out the best in each other. So you can feel just as as lonely or uh, negative being around uh, difficult uh, people close to us as, um, as if, if, if you're alone. Um, by the way, the Buddha did suggest solitude and, and being, uh, being alone as one of the best ways to find that inner peace. So um, that's, um, that's something to keep in mind. But whatever the circumstance, if you tend to take in all the information, not just in the news, but in conversations around and seeing what's what's wrong, um, we need to uh, remember all the good and practice seeing all the good. I wanted to share a, a quote that I have in my uh, my book, Awakening Joy. Uh, that I love. This is from Howard Zinn, uh, who was a, uh, a very um, well-respected historian uh, in the United States. He wrote the people's history of the United States, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the whole, the whole story. Uh, he also happened to be John Kabat-Zinn's father-in-law, but he was famous before John Kabat-Zinn. And this is what he says, I love this quote. He says, an optimist isn't necessarily a blithe, slightly sappy whistler in the dark of our time. Whistler in the dark, if that's a, an American idiot, is like, oh, everything is okay, la, 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 la. Not a blithe, slightly sappy whistler in the dark of our time. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It's based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. But if we remember those times and places, and there are so, so many, where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us energy to act 
and at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. So it takes some practice to see all the goodness, if that's not your natural inclination, especially with all the messages coming around. But that is our task. And if you, if you know the Buddha's teachings um, on wise effort, he says, guard against the unwholesome states. When they come, which is, is just part of life, fear, confusion, anger, wanting, jealousy, all of those things, they're just part of being human. He says, learn how to overcome them. But that's only half the equation of wise effort. Then he says, cultivate the wholesome, kindness, generosity, compassion, patience, equanimity, joy. He says, cultivate those things. And then the fourth wholesome aspect of wise effort is when those states arise, to maintain and increase those wholesome states, this is a good thing. So it's not just, oh yes, we can cultivate them and then go on. He says, no, no. He says, let yourself really feel and be nourished by the wholesomeness. In one discourse that I love, it's really the, the foundation or um, one of the key principles in the Awakening Joy course, um, which I am starting the, uh, the end of, of January and uh, invite you to, to check out. Um, in this discourse, the Buddha says, um, think to yourself if you're in the middle of a wholesome state um, and he gives the example of an act of generosity suppose you are in the middle of an act of generosity he says think to yourself i'm being generous now not oh aren't i wonderful and i hope everybody sees what a good person i am but he's saying notice how good it feels for generosity to move through me and along with that connection there is a feeling of uplift of gladness that accompanies that wholesome state and the discourse this is majima nikaya number 99 for those who like to look those things up he says that gladness connected with the wholesome, I call an equipment of mind to overcome all ill will and hostility. One gains inspiration in the meaning, inspiration in the Dharma. One delights and gladdens the heart. So he's saying, when you are in the middle of a wholesome moment, don't miss it. This is what a lot of people say the Awakening Joy Course comes down to. Don't miss it because it's so easy to miss it. And what, what I do is go through 10 wholesome states from the Buddhist teachings and cultivate them over time and noticing, getting practice at not missing the goodness in life. So what this does is it brings about more spaciousness than uh, just focusing on what's wrong. And I want to uh, share the image I'm sure everybody is familiar with of Kuan Yin, the, the embodiment, the bodhisattva of compassion, where she is ready to meet the cries of the world, leap from her seat, but she is also relaxed and at ease. She's not tearing her hair out and saying, oh my goodness, this is awful, what do we do? 
she finds that equanimity and that balance, even in the midst of suffering, to respond from centeredness, from a sense of well-being, from an open heart that can heal. So this changing the channel is not living in denial. It actually is the, an essential component to be able to open up and respond to all the difficulties in, in one's life. One, I'll take you through maybe a couple of practices uh, and then we can open it up. One of those wholesome states that the Buddha speaks of, uh, and that is a, a key one in, uh, in my uh, Awakening Joy course, the, the third of these wholesome states after intention and mindfulness is gratitude. That is probably the most direct way to open the channel. This is from the, from the Blessing Sutta, the Mangala Sutta, where he says, he's, uh, the Buddha is asked about the different blessings in one's life. And he says, to be reverent and humble, content and grateful. This is a blessing supreme. He also goes on to say, to hear the Dharma at the right time, this is a blessing supreme. And he further goes on to visit with spiritual people, to discuss, and that's another way to say, to practice the Dharma at the right time, this is a blessing supreme. So whatever is going on in your life, if you're coming here on a Sunday morning for me, uh, maybe evening for you, or maybe it's the next day uh, for you if you're uh, down under. Um, whatever your, your life situation is, if you are interested in the Dharma, if you want to uh, be with other like-minded friends, if you have a chance to practice a way to hold our suffering in the world, you've got something to be grateful for. You've got a blessing supreme. Um, and besides your Dharma practice, uh, we can practice gratitude very simply in an ongoing way. And I thought I'd take you through just a couple of exercises to, uh, to cultivate a few wholesome states, just to remind you. So gratitude is one. Uh, I invite you, whatever your, mm, your internal experience is right now, let's just see if we can open the channel to some goodness. So I invite you to uh, close your eyes for a moment. And bring to mind some blessing in your life. Someone or something that you're grateful for or grateful to. And bring an image of either that person or that situation so you have a connection with that blessing. And as you're in touch with this, this blessing, give a silent, sincere thank you right from your heart to that person 
or to life. Thank you. And as you're in touch with this thank you, notice how it feels inside. Let your mindful attention enjoy the landscape of gratitude. Thank you. You can now take a nice deep breath. And I invite you to call up another blessing, someone else or something, some other situation in your life. Have an image of this blessing. You probably have so many. And as you have that image, again, a simple thank you right from your heart to that person or to life. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being in my life. Or thank you, life. And again, enjoy that feeling of gratitude. Feel it in your body. Perhaps some relaxation or openness. Don't miss it. And one last time, take a nice deep breath. We do things in threes and in Buddhism. And call uh, another blessing. Bring up an image. A simple thank you from your heart. Thank you, and just relax in that feeling. Don't miss it. Okay, you can open up your eyes. Now, I, again, I share this not to um, deny all the difficulties, but what gratitude or other wholesome states, generosity, mm, kindness, um, joy, delight, fun, um, laughter, what they do is they open up our container so we're able to feel the difficult without being overwhelmed. Joanna Macy, a very inspiring teacher and friend um, uh, who's been important in my life, she has the uh, uh, the the spiral of the from the work that reconnects where she says it starts with gratitude for all the good and from that bigger container then you can let yourself feel all the pain inside and then you process the pain little by little skillfully 
until it's metabolized and then you see with fresh eyes and come from a, a Kuan Yin um, attitude and you go forth and make a difference in the world. And I, in Awakening Joy, gratitude is, my, is the third of these wholesome states. And then the fourth one is opening up to difficulties as a path to joy, which the Buddha had a lot to say about. Um, didn't, don't want to reverse those, don't want to start with the difficulties and then open to gratitude. The gratitude says yes to life. It's like putting out your satellite dish, yes, and then you can process the, the difficulties. So see, it's just about um, uh, time for my part, but before we uh, open it up to questions, I, I just want to say there's so many different ways to open your heart with wholesome states and maybe uh, just to open up the, yeah, the chat is open. And for a moment, uh, let's just put in the chat box besides gratitude, or you can include that as well. What allows you to change the channel when your mind is contracted or you're getting overwhelmed by despair in the world? What things or what activities work for you? What things do you do? Self-compassion, I'll read some out. Appreciation, a walk in nature, yes. We can have our, uh, our wisdom here. L love, being in nature, pets, breathe, hiking in mountains, hugging my dog, listening to music like Bach or Handel, yeah music and dancing, playing with my cat, listening to nature. What does it for you? There's probably so many if you think about it. Yoga, being in the body, pausing my, and telling myself I don't have to solve it right now. Chanting, being with like-minded people. Yes, hugging trees, surrender. Again, Qigong, these are things that sitting that you that are there, we can just forget to give ourselves that option or thinking that, um, oh, I've got to just uh, tune into all the sorrow in the world. How can I, people say in the joy course, how can I let myself feel well-being when there's so much suffering in the world. Well, if you're going around with despair and outrage and feeling guilty, if you're feeling good, you're just adding more despair to the world. But when we're around someone who uplifts us because they are emanating love and goodness, it reminds us. So I don't think of this as a selfish uh, exercise. This is one of the most important things we can do for each other to bring a little bit more of our centeredness and our love and our caring into the world. So I just invite you, uh, when you find yourself getting overwhelmed, uh, this is a good thing. The Buddha says it's good. Don't just get overwhelmed by the unwholesome. Process it but cultivate the wholesome states and cultivate and when they are here to to really let yourself feel them and uh so with that i'll i'll pause and if there are any um any questions or comments um if you raise the raise your hand in the reactions box and you're willing to come on we can um uh, we can have you come on and uh, so we can have a dialogue um, and otherwise we can uh, just have questions in the in the box. Uh, yes, uh, Ryan, Reinhold, is it? Yes, yes, it is. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Um, 
Um, I've got a question because I I find it possible to to access positive or, or states like gratitude or or joy or um, but what always comes up nearly at the same time is the feeling that I can't trust these states because they are ephemeral or transitory in themselves and if it's relationships or, or situations some events in my life have shown me that the things you can be grateful for today or the people you can be grateful for today may be gone tomorrow without um, you having any say in it and this and rationally I can see that it's sabotaging my access to to more inner peace but it comes up nearly at the same time and I was wondering if you have something mm -hmm. like an idea on how to how to deal with that so to get to have the nourishing quality of these states without um yeah well I think <laughs> I suppose yeah. you understand what I mean without dwelling on the fact that they're not going to stay yeah. yeah well first it's really uh good that you notice that that you uh, that you see that habit of mind because if you don't see it then it's going to be sabotaging you without you even realizing and many people say i i don't uh, i don't dare to let myself feel joy i don't know why but it's just you know something happens you know so just bringing a mindful awareness to this is is an important first step uh and if you know anything about the buddha's teachings uh, well i'm sure you do but a central aspect of the buddha's teachings is what you are encountering it's all impermanent nothing lasts and in fact the buddha said remember this if you have one there's one discourse he says if you have one reflection to keep in mind impermanence anicca that's the key not to um become depressed over the fact that everything changes because if you remember this uh when things are difficult then this is the other side of the equation no matter how unpleasant or difficult things are they're going to change so this is a a valuable thing to remember when it's difficult oh yes it changes but the buddha says to remember that so that you can appreciate this moment right now because when your mind goes to oh but this is not going to last you're actually missing out on the experience in this moment you know there you are you know hugging a loved one and thinking you know oh we're gonna part soon or this person can go the the, the Thich Nhat Han suggests every time you hug you hug somebody hug them as if it's your last time so you can, but really be there for it not hug them and say oh I'm not gonna I'm not gonna it's, oh yes how precious this is so to use what your natural, what your mind naturally jumps to can shift in a sense of deep appreciation for the preciousness of this moment. But that means being here for it. Your mind says, oh, this won't last. Oh, let's be here for it. Instead of toppling forward and missing out on that beautiful moment that is reality that's just the way reality is so you don't have to get rid of that thought just use it as a way to practice let me be here for this good moment instead of toppling forward to my mind saying it's not going to last then you are um you're really being here and you're you're bringing wisdom in at that same moment 
you know, what is that? There's that line uh, by William Blake uh, to kiss the joy as it flies is a famous lie. Oh, yes, let me be here for it. Um, and more and more come directly into the truth of impermanence as a way to make you come alive and fully be here, not toppling forward. Ah, yeah. So good luck. Too. Okay. Let's see. Anything else? Oh, don't be shy. You hit the reaction box. Or if you like, I don't know, uh, Marnie, if there's any any questions. Uh, I haven't been looking. I'm scrolling now. I'm wondering. There's a lot in the chat. If you uh, if you have a question or you might have put it in the chat before, uh, put it in right now so it'll be the uh, the one that's most easily seen. Here's one, I see. Uh, I have a question on sharing and being hindered. Uh, uh, so I, I, this is Peter's is not a, is not a, um, it's not a complete question. Oh, there you go. Okay, come on. And then I see Laura has a, uh, has a question. Yeah, hi, Peter. Oh, Hi, uh, James. Um, <laughs> thank you. I'm a little shy to to put my uh, question. Uh, I have some some laying over my my screen. So, um, first of all, my 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 first uh, reaction to your um, suggestion to to uh, um, put um, uh, in a chat, what helps us is um, to to be in a situation like we are right now. Is uh, <laughs> almost difficult to to talk about it without getting emotional. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful to see you all, and and to know that we share something. Um, other things that you were, were talking about. Sorry for being. Um, mm. It's beautiful. Not, You're touching not, very, not very male like. Uh, no, the, oh, uh, let go of that. <laughs> my, my, my thing is bringing out the divine feminine in all of us where there's too much testosterone running, running this I, world. <laughs> I, I knew that um, uh, I would be embraced. Thank you so much. So this is uh, one thing um, I uh, do enjoy very much. I, I got this the, the mail, the invitation to this uh, meeting just uh, 20 minutes before we started. And I just stopped everything by cooking. And, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 my dog also, we are filled with joy. And mm -hmm. um, of course, um, in, in your little exercise before, I had some uh, some uh, similar uh, association as uh, um, Reinhard uh, before. I, 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 there came people to my mind whom I'm uh, so intensely grateful, <laughs> and um, at the same time, maybe sometimes the same persons. Um, they they also hurt me a, a lot. Um, things went went bad, and and woo. <laughs> Um, you you said uh, James uh, that, that's the other side of the matter. So I I also see uh, how difficult it can be. And and maybe if if we would sit in one room, maybe 
um, after some period of joy, <laughs> there could be some some arguments. You 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 have a, a different thought about this and that, and then my my gratitude may um, uh, lower a little. So. Um, mm. It's it's not really a question. It's just uh, I want to express, um, yeah, there's the, a the struggle with um, the ambivalence mm -hmm. of uh, knowing. I have I have sometimes my my heart is just overflowing from from joy, and and the next moment I think, oh, I'm in a toxic relationship. I uh, maybe I should stop it because uh, it it makes me all toxic. So um, sometimes very difficult to to find a way. And uh, what you said, uh, uh, your last remark. Oh yeah, when it is nice, you <laughs> embrace it before it, it goes away. That's uh, what I what I um, take as a takeaway from from today. So mm -hmm. not a question, just just a, a reaction. Thank you very much. No, 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 stay, stay there for a moment. You know, you bring up some uh, a, a couple of important things. One is first how um, how valuable and uh, nourishing it is to be with like-minded friends. Like mm -hmm. you said, you just came on, and and your your heart opened so much. And this is. You know why the Buddha said uh, refuge in in the sangha is is so key to our well being, uh, and I've you know, I do a lot of uh, climate days and uh, and engagement and when people come to those those days at, at the beginning uh, there there's a heaviness in the room and uh, oh gosh this is so terrible and it is. It, it, as, as said, you know, I'm, I highly recommend, by the way, One Earth Sangha uh, as a as a Dharma response to climate. But by um, every time we do, we come together and share our sorrow and our sadness for the world. There's a feeling of connection, and people come away in a very different state when the, than when they started just by sharing our sorrow in the context of the dharma holding it what a difference we need each other and if you go through this alone then it gets uh, very heavy so that's one i'm so glad that you saw this 20 minutes before and and joined us and not only joined us but in your coming on uplifting us because your heart is so open the the other piece is yes, as wonderful as relationships can be, they can be difficult. And the people that we care about most are sometimes the ones that are, um, are most painful when there's a, a separation or the ones that we've grown up with and there can be toxic relationships. You've just described life yeah, it's not all the heaven realm. Um, so I want to first mention if if there's if the relationship is is more toxic than uplifting, then we need to take a look and see is this healthy. Doesn't mean that you can that you need to uh, wish them ill, but if you're not if you're not thriving at least more than half the time in the relationship that's something to look at you know uh, and in awakening joy forgiveness is a theme that runs through about uh, four of the of the of the different states um, and if you've done any loving kindness meditation you know besides sending loving kindness to those that we uh, that are easy for us we work up to uh, loving kindness for the difficult because even they are worthy of our kindness and our compassion for the causes and conditions that have made them who they are. So this is what practice is about, especially if it's people that we care about. You know, I'm, I'm with my wife, a wonderful um, relationship. We've been together for 43 years and she's my best friend 
And there's no one that I get impatient with like I do with her and vice versa. And we fortunately, we started the, the relationship. He was into the Dharma and we said, let's grow. Let's use this relationship to grow. So that's part of the deal to see how I get caught and how I get attached to my opinion or to learn better communication so we can really help each other grow and to know that that is the task for us in our practice um, to not get caught in our negativity bias around the other person too because this is this is an easy habit to get into but to see that other person with fresh eyes and i'll share with you one of my main practices i've been doing it for decades one of my main practices is to look for the good in that in the other and the more i look for the good instead of being subject to my oh i know who they are or they're going to disappoint me again or oh i can't count on them the more you look for the good, the more you will bring it out of them. And the more you look for the, how they're going to disappoint you, you set up that energy field where there's a negativity already. So if you're fortunate enough to be in a relationship where the other person is willing to um, wake up and to use it to grow, then that can be, that's the key how can we bring out the best in each other? And maybe you need support, outward support, or maybe you just need heart to heart when the heat isn't up to keep on looking for the good. And that's how you turn your frustration and anger into compassion and loving kindness. So good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, one more person, Bartek. Hi. Uh, hi, James. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Oh, that's great. So, so nice to meet you. I'm a big fan. <laughs> um, I like your light approach and and your ways of actually expressing those teachings. It's very understandable. I found them practical too, and yeah, I would like to thank you too for being here with us. You. <laughs> Wish you a happy new year and have got a few questions, but one of them you actually answered it, uh, in the previous question. It was towards the God's um, defilement, jealousy. <laughs> um, so I do work with a jealousy a lot. I'm experiencing this in my body towards my partner and I'm trying to learn more about this experience, how to relate this, because it takes me a few weeks before actually I can shake this off. And do you have any more maybe advice, James, how to work with jealousy mm -hmm. also towards my partner? Um, that would be very helpful. Okay. So, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, well, first, you're not alone in that. <laughs> it's something to, to, to just acknowledge. It's a very natural and human thing. And how painful it is, how it cuts from that beautiful feeling of enjoying being with the person. <laughs> you both Absolutely. suffer. And... Uh, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the 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 uh, the, the meta teachings that the the near enemy of loving kindness is attachment. It disguises okay. love, the pain of love, but true love isn't painful. Loving kindness is a is a, 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 a an opening, an expansive quality, and attachment and jealousy is a contracted quality. So this is painful. Yes. And if you think about it, suppose, mm, suppose somebody just set your partner aside for a moment, right? Uh, or okay. 
or you can use you can use them if, if you like but suppose uh somebody who have a good relationship with wants something from you has an agenda for you bartek please don't disappoint me how does that feel being on the receiving end of them wanting you to act in a certain way to please them I don't think that would be a great experience because they will expect something from me and I'll feel the pressure already yes. um, in the start. Yeah. And so you contract when somebody wants something from you. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel when, when, the, when the person says, oh, Bartek, it's so, it's so good to be with you. I want you to know I really enjoy and appreciate you who, for who you are. How does that feel for you being on the receiving end? It's a different feeling, absolutely. It's very relaxed and very light, um, I think, yeah. way. You open up. So just to know from a practical point of view, when you are jealous and the other person can feel your jealousy, what you're doing is causing them to withdraw more. And mm -hmm. the last thing they will do is say, oh, it's so nice to be with you. That's not what the reaction is. Whereas if you say, if you really practice, this person I care about, I want to see them happy. I just want to see them happy. And you have agreements what they're, what they're uh we're almost out mm -hmm. of time realizing yeah um and you have agreements okay this is the agreements that you you both know are the limits but you just want to see them happy if they're happy with being with other people as long as they are respectful of your agreements mm -hmm. your partner is happy and you can delight in their happiness this is what mudita sympathetic joy is you take joy in the happiness of others and when they can feel you just want their happiness rather than possessing them they want to be with you that much more that's just how it works so i would have compassion for these feelings inside of you don't judge yourself for them because that's only going to make it worse okay. and to uh to nourish that place that's that's in in need and and practice wishing happiness for your your partner and looking for the good and letting them know that you that that's regardless of what your habits are that that's your intention to see them happy that's and amazing james thank you thanks thanks for <laughs> that's that. That's amazing. I don't know if we have questions. I have one more quick question, but I don't know if you have time, James. It's... We don't. We don't have time. But if you if you write to me, I'll, I'll I'll be happy to to answer. Or you put it in the chat box, and maybe Marnie can uh, can send it to me. Thank um, you. I'll write to you, James. No problem. Good, good to be with you. Thank so you. and and, uh, and I uh, I know we're out of time, and I, I saw in there there was a question about being positive about wars and things like that i'm not talking about that i'm talking i i am i'm truly um i think it's essential that we engage however we can from a place of love rather than um than ill will and othering and the more we come from love the more our actions will be inspiring and i'm we need our engagement. This is not about sitting on our hands or saying, oh, everything is going fine. Um, it's, a, it's about engaging from that place of, of metta and goodwill. So a um, couple of things. Uh, first, I just want to mention for those who are interested, the uh, Awakening Joy course uh, starts at the, at the end of of this month and no one is turned away there's a modest fee but um here is the uh here is the um 
website. And I also want to uh, remind people about uh, Donna for the um, for Sangha Live, and uh, some will go to me if you get it in by the end of the day. So um, let's end with a, a dedication uh, for our good fortune of being here together, coming here together, taking refuge in the Sangha. and collecting all of our good fortune, all of the merit that comes from being here and sharing it with the world. May our coming here be of benefit to all beings everywhere and this beautiful planet that we share. <laughs>